What do you think of when I say the names George Brett and Billy Martin in the same sentence? If the image of two stereotypical hicks having a good old time on the farm pops in your head, you probably couldn't be further from the truth. All jokes aside though, you probably know what this is about. This video is about the game that the New York Yankees played against the Kansas City Royals on July 24th, 1983, better known as the Pine Tar Game. Now, of course, pretty much anyone who loves baseball knows about the controversial call that was made during the game and about how it affected the outcome. But what you may not know is what led up to this and the repercussions afterwards. So let's talk about it. Also, please like and subscribe. It'll make me happy. Okay, bye. Let's just start with the general summary of everything that happened leading up to the moment you probably already know about. All right, chat, it's go time. Let's see if we can get a uh, sub one glitch list. Neither team score until the top of the second inning when John Wathan for the Royals is on third and Frank White hits a ground out, letting Wathan come home and bringing the score to one to zero. At the bottom of that same inning with no one on base, Dave Winfield hits a home run to deep left, tying up the game for the Yankees. The Royals get another run at the top of the fourth when again, Frank White hits a single with Wathan on third, bringing him home for the second time. The Royals put up another run in the sixth inning when Don Slate hits a triple, bringing Frank White home. The Yankees get three more runs at the bottom of that inning when Burt Campanaris, Lou Pinella, hey I said his name right that time, and Don Baylor are all driven home. Time. Mm, look at that time. Let's go, baby. All right, now that we got that settled, let's get to the real meat and taters of this game. The call. The moment you, your mother, probably everyone you've met in your entire life has seen a thousand times. But if not, if this is your first exposure to this story, strap in, fellas. With the Royals behind by one run in the top of the ninth, two outs on the board, and UL Washington on first, the Royals are gonna need something special to make this happen and pull off this win. And yeah, you could say something special happens for sure. The Yankees decided to switch out their relief pitcher Dale Murray and replace him with their closer, Rich Goose, Goosage. Also a quick shout out to Dale Murray for that game. He went three and a third innings out of the bullpen and left the mound without giving up any runs. Goose was called up just to make one more teeny tiny, not all important, not stressful blast out of the game. I'm kidding of course, by the way, it was a very high stress point of the game. It seems like his Uber driver took a wrong turn and his social anxiety got the best of him. So he just said, screw it. And now introducing George Brett. George Brett was really good at baseball. He once had a year where his batting average was 390, and in that same year, his 203 OPS plus more or less meant that he was more than twice as good as the average hitter in baseball at the time. He's so well liked and respected in Kansas City that they briefly made him the guy whose job it was to make the Royals hitters better. So he's a guy who could absolutely do some big boy damage here. This means that not only did Goose need to get that 27th out and protect the one run lead the Yankees had, he also had to do it against one of the greatest hitters to ever live. After fouling off the first pitch, Brett rockets the ball into the right field stands, bringing the score to 5-4, to four, giving the Royals a one-run lead. As Brett is crossing home plate though, the Yankees manager Billy Martin stretches stuff up to the home plate umpire, rookie umpire, Tim McClelland. See, Martin, he was a man with a plan. He and some of the other members of the Yankees had noticed that Brett uses quite a bit of pine tar on his bat, and they were waiting for the right moment to use rule 1.10 C. And boy, did they find it. If you don't know what pine tar is, it basically just makes the bat really sticky so it's easier to grip it. And in baseball, putting it too high on your bat is a big no-no. Rule 1.10 C states that a bat may not be covered by such a substance more than 18 inches from the tip of the handle. Bringing this to the ump's attention, they take the bat and measure the amount of pine tar by using home plate as a reference, the plate itself being 17 inches. Placing the bat next to the plate, they can clearly see that the pine tar exceeds the 18 inch limit. So Tim McClellan turns around, finds Brett in the dugout, points at him with the bat and calls him out. A home run turned into an out thanks to a rule violation. The Royals went from taking the lead to losing the game just off of one decision. And as you could probably guess, Brett wasn't too pleased with the decision. Having to be restrained by multiple people so he didn't beat the absolute out of the umpire, just to put it lightly. The reason they called Brett out for this was because if pine tar is more than the 18 inches from the handle, it is considered an illegally batted ball. And due to rule 6.06, .06, any batter that hits an illegally batted ball is automatically called out. The Yankees third baseman Greg Nettles claims in his autobiography titled Balls that he was actually the one who told Martin about the pine tar rule. But this game was far from over. You'll see why in a second. If a team disagrees with a call made in a game and thinks the incorrect call changed the outcome of the game, they can protest the game. If they win, which they very rarely do, the game must be replayed from the moment the screwed up call was made. After four days of protesting this game, the league president Lee McPhail came out and agreed it was a bit of a BS situation, saying that the reason the pine tar rule was made in the first place wasn't because of it giving the players an unfair advantage, but 
but because of economic issues at the time. Using a ton of pine tar can turn into a sticky mess when a ball is hit too low and the bat transfers the pine tar to the ball. And as you may know, having anything on a ball that will discolor it is a big no-no. A rule that was created due to a very unfortunate accident. So if a ball comes in contact with the dark colored pine tar, it must be thrown away and a new ball must be put in its place. Lee agreed that Brett hadn't done anything to give himself an unfair advantage and therefore reinstated Brett's homer and said the game is required to continue from there. 25 whole days later on August 18th, 1983, this game would be resumed. The Yankees, of course, were not too happy about this. And this is where it gets even more funky. They used many tactics to try to get this game canceled so they could keep their win. One of them, for example, is to simply delay rescheduling the game as long as they can to try to get everyone to just call it a forfeit. Eventually, they did schedule it though, as I said earlier, almost an entire month later. So when the teams finally had to retake the field, it would be the second after Brett's home run was revised into counting. Five to four Royals, top of the ninth, two outs. As a show of how unseriously the Yankees took having to drag themselves back onto the field all this time later, they made some defensive replacements. These included moving Don Mattingly to second base, who threw left-handed. This matters because left-handed throwers don't play second base since they'd have to throw backwards. Literally envision every second baseman you've ever watched in a baseball game and how they throw right-handed. There's a reason for that. They also put Ron Guidry in center field. He was a pitcher. <laughs> Another interesting strategy the Yankees tried to use was charging $2.50 for fans to go back to the resumed game. Of course, this caused a few silly little things called lawsuits, and the Bronx Supreme Court even ordered an injunction, as requested by the Yankees, by the way, on the game to let them sort out the lawsuits before they resumed it. But the American League stepped in and said, no, 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 this game's gonna happen for real, for real kill me, and appealed the injunction. So the Yankees were yet again forced to schedule the game. What a dirty play, boys. Another crazy little detail about this one specifically is that the Royals were on the plane on the way to the resumed game when they heard about this situation. So they didn't even know if they were going to be playing by the time they landed. So that was it. The Yankees were out of tricky ideas to try to get this game canceled, and it was time to play it. Except for one little last minute thing they were going to try. They had come up with a plan to challenge if Brett and UL Washington actually touched every bag. But the umps were very smart about this. They literally had a meeting specifically to go over what tactics the Yankees might use to prevent this game from playing out. One of them being this exact situation. So when the Yankees infielders started playing catch with the pitcher and Yankees manager Billy Martin marched out on the field to speak with the ump about it, the ump literally pulled out an affidavit with the words, nah fam, you wrong, Lamau. Okay, not actually, obviously, but it did say that yes, the umps from the previous game said they hit every bag. After this, it was just normal baseball, baby. Well, as normal as starting from the top of the ninth inning can go. The Royals one and only batter of August 18th strikes out and it's the Yankees turn. Now the question is, can they do it? No. No, they can't. All three Yankees who come up to bat go down one by one. Bada bing, bada boom, game is over. The Royals take home the dub and the Yankees take the L. Except it doesn't really matter in the end since neither team even made it to the playoffs that year. So, I mean, good on you, I guess. The Orioles won the World Series that year. Woo. But hey, does the World Series really matter more than your pride? Yeah, probably.